95.7 The Hog, The Morning Hog Show, Riggs, Guy, and The Brew Review with Vinny S.R. Parat. Oh, right there. Let's hear from Vinny. And Vinny, you brought special new friends. We got some special friends like we do every week. Uh, I'm excited to introduce Ian uh, from Half Wall Brewing. Ian. So, Ian, let's hear for Ian. Let's hear yeah, for Ian. Applause, Ian. Absolutely. So we're going to go ahead and discuss some of their beers today. Uh, they are not in bottle form yet. Okay. Uh, they are just brewing out of the brewery in Half Wall. As a matter of fact, right now they're selling so much beer through their own Half Walls right. um, that we haven't fully expanded yet. But I'm going to let Ian get into all that so we're excited so we actually have some bottles today that Sweet. they bottled specially for us to thank you bring Ian. out and sample nice. that's what a nice guy this is, he is. What, this is where the heart starts to feel it right there absolutely I, I didn't know you had a heart that's I, the first well, i heard of i, I know so. but after this segment i may grow one ah. see how good the beer is <laughs> uh ian tell me about the half wall bruisement i've been and i've tried uh, some of the ones there in New Smyrna, but tell me what's cooking with you Great. guys. So Vinny mentioned my name's Ian. Uh, to my left here, I have Jordan. So we collectively make the beer for Half Wall. Um, as you mentioned, we have a few locations, and we're blasting through our beer just in these own restaurants here. Um, the brewery itself is located on 44 in New Smyrna Beach. Uh, there's also a Half Wall restaurant there. It's a really nice place. We have a big tiki bar outside, so come and hang out. Uh, right now, we have three beers in rotation. We have Blue Trailer Blonde, which is an American Blonde Ale. We have Stugel Flugel IPA, which is an American IPA, and Love we that. have Jefficus, which is an oatmeal stout with bourbon, coffee, and vanilla. And you guys awesome. get to try all three of those. Three today. varied types of brew right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Yeah. Good have, you know. You're light, you're dark, and you're hoppy. Like Caters to everybody. It's a full meal right there. And we have an IPA for you, so we're all yes. good to go. Uh, for me, uh, let's we have a fight for IPA. <laughs> Two straws. We Two work straw. together. We don't mind. I thought you guys used one, but well, that's all right. Well, we, don't, we can It's share a different it. show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you, that's the after hours. Uh, I've... Uh, so Half Wall didn't even need to do this, really. But it turns out you get this new location in New Smyrna Beach, which has all this space. Tell me about how that all came about, that Half Wall started doing their own stuff. So Half Wall has been uh, an established uh, uh, restaurant series, if you want to say it that right. way. Um, so their primary market are craft beer enthusiasts, um, mm -hmm. people who like good food and good beer. I mean, you That's go into me. those restaurants, <laughs> you're looking at 70-plus taps, not counting the vast array of bottles and cans and nice. everything, rotators. Uh, Vinny here has played a huge part in those guys getting some really stellar beers. Mm -hmm. um, so he's definitely helped out the cause a lot. So fast forward after a few years of the restaurant business kind of growing and, you know, people seeing the, the need for, you know, good craft beer in yes. the area, they decided to, you know, implement a brewery and kind of bring that in. So that's where we came into play. So we're the baby business so to speak, in right. the family here. But, uh, you know, as we were saying, we're kind of blasting through our beer and all these restaurants and everything. Yeah, it's working. Yeah, it allowed us to get a bunch of new equipment and everything so we can sometime by the end of the year expand beyond just the half-wall restaurants mm -hmm. and bring different recipes in and so forth. So it's not just those three all the time. So, Ian, how long have you been brewing? We kind of asked that question. Um, I have been working professionally with beer about six years. Um, I've been brewing professionally about four. Okay, great. Awesome. And the uh, the half walls, if you know, I mean, you get you have a beer menu when you go to the half wall. <laughs> this is a, this is how you know stuff gets real when there's a beer menu, separate thing for your food. And I love that because it gives you an idea exactly what you were talking about. I mean, you, you can go over and look at the taps, but you get in that menu and you look and you have them all partitioned, IPAs and, and stouts and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of where the name comes from. Yeah. It's a half wall of beer. Love it. That's where that whole situation comes from. For See, I, I, I didn't Absolutely. want to ask about inspirations or background names, but now I got the explanation. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm smarter already. Uh, Wait and, until we start drinking. Yeah, exactly. Well, that, yeah, that'll wear off quickly. Uh, and, well, let's start. Look, Vinny's already Sounds reaching good. for a bottle for crying out loud. Why be shy? Beat me to it. All right, there's, uh, there's number one. Again, that's the official label for today. <laughs> that may change for tomorrow, right? Yeah. So we're going to start off with our Blue Trailer Blonde. Okay. It's a really light, crisp, no frills type of beer, honestly. Okay. It's designed to be something that you could sit at the beach and crush five or 40 of. Right. Whatever you'd like. Beautiful. Some of these all down the line. There you go. Thank you. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard stories about people who go to New Smyrna Beach and actually have beer while on the beach. So I uh, looking forward to feeling that vibe. And uh, tell us about yeah, obviously a drinkable beer. Was there any? Do you get inspiration when you come up with a beer? Or do you have something you're like, I like this. I want to have something like it, or is so it just a the half wall restaurants? Yeah. Um, 
they're a unique place in that we have a lot of craft enthusiasts coming in. Right. We also have a lot of people who are new to craft coming in. Okay. Um, in this day and age with the, the huge brewery boom and how many different breweries there are and how many different styles there are, right. there's a lot of people who are trying to get on board but honestly are a little intimidated to go to a new brewery mm -hmm. if they're not familiar with it yet. Right. We get a lot of those people coming into these restaurants because they feel comfortable coming into a place like the Half Wall Restaurant and saying, let me try this, let me try this, let me see you know what I like. So with that being said, this beer was designed specifically for people who are new to craft beer. It's, okay. it's made intentionally to be an entry level craft beer. Right. If you're someone who is a craft enthusiast and you really like a complex, robust beer, you're not going to be underwhelmed by it because you crush it all day. Right. I mean, can I say all day? Yes, please. I can say all day. Of course you can. Yeah. <laughs> so you can crush this beer all day. And, and again, that's exactly what it's for. But if you're someone who, again, may be new to craft, you can okay. come in and drink this and it's not going to totally blast your palate out. But it's going to have a little something extra going on, a little something that's maybe going to make you want to try an IPA or a stout. After right. That. Yeah. And is that the key to being able to, uh, so, I said, if you're going for uh, for several beers in a row, to have something that isn't overwhelming with taste, how do you keep that within uh, limits? Um, quality assurance is an integral part of being a brewer. <laughs> I bet. So with that being said, you need to have something that's not going to blow your palate out mm -hmm. early on. You don't want to be drinking double IPAs right. all day because then you're not going to taste what you're making. Sure. And you'll fall asleep at some point. If you're me. Uh, uh, I'm a pro. Don't worry about this it. This is one of those type of beers that <laughs> yeah. if, if you are afraid of craft beer, mm -hmm. say, hey, try this first. And it'll, it'll get them going. You're right. Exactly. It is a beginner well, we've beer. It's, it's great. Lawnmower beer. Does this qualify? I think this is. Uh, see, I feel like there's a hell of a lot more flavor in this thing and a lot more happening than the simplicity of your explanation, which is good because mm -hmm. I'm a craft beer dude. But if you're off the street, this is not going to knock you off your exactly. stool. Exactly. Right? So it's 4.5% alcohol. So again, yeah. it's really low ABV. You can drink them all day. Yeah. Um, when you drink it really cold, like we have it right now, you mm -hmm. get a little bit of a hoppy bitterness up front. Yeah. But again, it's not overbearing like an IPA. And you get a little bit of a, a biscuity, almost bready uh, finish on the beer. Okay. Which again, it just helps give you a little something extra. So you're not tasting like corn or something like that, awesome. like a lot of macro lagers and those types of things. Right. We, we kind of label these gateway beers. Yeah. These are great beers for people, like okay. you say, that come in and want to try something a little bit different. Different, but not yeah. go out too out too far outside the box. You work with this, get them up. They get that flavor, yeah. understand what it is, and they're able to move them on from there. This is a, I mean, this is a great beer. And Do you I have would more? People, yeah, 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 yeah really. <laughs> uh, when, when, when people are coming in, it's that good, and, and perhaps are not uh, craft beer yeah, enthusiasts or not guy. super knowledgeable about it. Is it nice to have uh, there in New Smyrna at the location to have the brewery right there for them to see? Hey, this is. This is how fresh this is. It's Absolutely. coming from that room over there, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It, it definitely helps. And um, we're a little different. So if you go into, I'll say, a traditional brewery, if you want to mm -hmm. say it that way, a lot of times they have their own standalone tap room and so forth. Okay. We are separate from the restaurants. We're right. affiliated, but we're not the restaurant. Gotcha. We actually don't have our own tap room. So if you want to get really technical about it, we're a production-only facility. Gotcha. They actually have to sell the beer to us, and yep. we sell it back to them with the laws that are here in Florida. That's my that's my favorite part of the uh, of the of the beer carousel right there that that has to happen but it works right yeah, and absolutely. <laughs> yeah and it's uh, and if you have not been over to the half wall in New Smyrna make make an appointment let a, for this beer alone but there's a lot more coming so. that's just the first one yeah. so we talk about names all the time and there's some very interesting names that we're going to come through on this you want to kind of give just a little bit brief history on where the name came from so blue trailer blonde mm -hmm. when this brewery was in its infancy um actually before i say that let me say we were very fortunate in that we had about a year or a year and a half plus or minus to go through a recipe development and testing phase okay. a lot of breweries don't have that um yeah. a lot of breweries are new startup businesses businesses that don't really have a choice but to hit the ground running and get some capital coming back so they can expand their business from there. Um, being affiliated with the restaurants allowed us to take some time to do what we needed to do to get these beers ready right. so they weren't baby beers, so to speak, when mm -hmm. they first went to distribution. So with that being said, while the Pub 44 building was under construction, um, and when I say construction, I mean Literally construction. Re, it, re, re, renovating and revamping. Yeah, yeah. It, it got to a point where they quickly regretted not just leveling it and building a new building. <laughs> I wondered about that because <laughs> I live in Edgewater. I saw it over the course of uh, over a year, yeah. and I, I thought, well, there must and, be a lot happening and inside. And it's beautiful. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, you know, a lot of the locals or lifers who have been coming into the yeah. various incarnations of that building <laughs> right. over the last few decades have all said they can't believe what it looks like on the inside now. But yeah. anyway, while that was all going on, we were actually brewing in a mobile office trailer in the parking lot. Oh, I saw that. That's yeah. what was happening. We drove by that blue trailer, <laughs> yeah. blue trailer blonde. Sure. So nice. Um, as far as perfect. As far as some suits were concerned, that was the engineering and planning building. 
for that facility. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, we actually had a, a one barrel commercial brew setup. So one barrel is 31 gallons. It's right. a really small setup, but it still was a commercial setup nonetheless yeah. that we crammed into this little <laughs> mobile office trailer. And I love that. We were brewing in there, doing boils in the summertime with no air conditioner in this little tiny metal box. And it, it got pretty interesting in there. Um, so that's where the name of the Blue Trailer Blonde came from. This is, I mean, how, this is where Breaking Bad goes right, right here. This is like a trailer. Everything's yeah, good. It's all that, good. That was the reference many times when you yeah. pull up yeah. and they have their mask hanging off and they're coming out all sweaty and Big rubber gloves and everything going them. on. I'm like, hey, I've seen this show before. Yeah. So this guy still walks around. Yeah, I'm, well, yeah, it's hot. I understand why. So you've seen the second Ace Ventura movie, right? Of course. When he's in the Rhino? Yes. That pretty much was that trailer. Oh, God. Oh, wow. Okay. that's uh, Well, then it is quite remarkable that this tastes so good. Great visual, right, as I take a sip. I appreciate that. Uh, but, uh, wow, well, that's good inspiration then, I guess. And then, of course, you, uh, as names go, this next one, we're going to need a huge explanation on the front end for... For Stugal Flu. Right. This has the least explanation. It, it does, does have it? the least explanation, <laughs> it? and it's going to be the funniest, yeah. I think. Okay. So go ahead, Ian. Okay, so we're going through beer names, and you'd be amazed at how difficult it is to get a beer name that's not already taken. Yeah. Or something that's so close to <laughs> right. something that's taken that you're going to get a cease and desist, and it's not even worth pursuing. Yeah. So as we're going through beer names, and as uh, the owners of the brewery and um, some of the higher-ups in the brewery are talking about beer names and so forth, mm -hmm. we got to a point where we had this IPA. It was the only one that was left over with the name. So to make a long story short, we're going through everything. And uh, one of the owners is just saying, ah, just whatever. It's called Stugal Flugel. Forget it. Just Stugal Flugel. Right. It's just a word. And I'm like, Okay, You're Google, dismissing Google, it. Yeah. Google, nobody's got it. Cool, let's run with it. <laughs> right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> See that? It's, it's the inspiration. Well, the morning hog. Rings the guy. That was a lot of inspiration it took us to come up with that. Because it's in the morning, and you get the rest of it. I never got that. That's awesome. I, I just put two and two together with All the, the secrets are coming out today. Oh, oh, man. It's all coming out. That's awesome. Thanks to Ian for... Uh, it's the beer. Is what uh, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so then you've got to put a beer to that name. Absolutely. And uh, this uh, this represents... What are we talking about in here? What's going so on it's inside? Stugal Flugel. We call it an American IPA. Um, a lot of that comes from it being a little more of a hop-forward style, but this one's more mild. Yeah. Um, it's not a, a tongue cooker, as we call it, or it's not something that's going to you know completely destroy your palate. You know, you're still going to taste your launch, that kind of thing. But it's got enough of a hoppy bitterness and profile up front that if you are a hop head, you won't be underwhelmed by it. Kind of going back to the concept of the Blondale, for example. Okay. Um, it's made to be a little more entry level. Right. Um, now we have a big, bold, complex double IPA. That's going to be one of our next beers we're putting out in the next month or two. Don't that's tease me. Don't tease me, Ian. Don't tease me. Well, now you have to come to the restaurant. <laughs> well, of course I will. As I was Maybe taking, drink off a tank. How <laughs> oh, that? as I was taking. <laughs> that first sip that thought in my mind was this is an entry level IPA mm -hmm. yeah. it's very smooth and it's not an in your face mm -hmm. and I, we were thinking the same thing what uh, awesome. what what uh, let me uh, there's there's a fruit in here what's happening there's no fruit in there. no not at all nope. there's a fruit holding the cup yeah. <laughs> oh. Bam. Got, got him you're actually you that's probably coming from the hops yeah yeah, so uh, this happens, beer right? showcases two hops. It's only two hops mm -hmm. in this beer. Um, a lot of your primary bittering that you get and a lot of your flavor that you're getting is coming from Cascade. Okay. Cascade is just a, a really commonly used hop in a lot of American IPAs. Um, it's very popular. A uh, certain brewery that this guy over here slings a lot of, pretty right. much made Cascade uh, <laughs> popular in the U.S. That would be Sierra Nevada. Oh, That's understandable. Okay, there you go. Sign, you can show up or something, yep, right? Right? Get a bonus for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we also uh, use uh, Columbus hops in there. Um, okay. Columbus are also, or is, I should say, very popular in a lot of American IPAs. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's a, a it's a little bit uh, of a, a stronger hop, if you want to okay. say it in like a layman's term. So you get a, a little bit more of a flavor profile from okay. that. When you put both of those hops together, it just brings out a lot of uh, citrusy notes. Yeah. You get a little bit of a piney resinous flavor uh, that you get with a lot of mm -hmm. classic IPAs. But this beer features actually a really heavy dry hop. Um, so a dry hop is when you add just exactly that dry hop pellets right into your fermenter on your mm -hmm. cold side. Okay. So a lot of what you're tasting in this beer is actually coming from that. It's relatively low IBU for being an American IPA. Yeah. It's relatively low alcohol. It's 5.9%. Okay. But again, a lot of that flavor that you're getting is coming from that dry hop. So you get some citrusy flavors. You get yeah. some piney resinous flavors. 
Um, some people get a little bit of like a, almost like a black licorice note that comes from the Columbus hops. Right. So uh, you, you could pretty much say, Ian, that uh, dry hopping is like uh, steeping tea. Exactly. You're, you're putting it in and you're Don't letting it sit there like a tea bag and let it steep into the okay. uh, into the boil. Exactly. Is it is it difficult to balance that if you wanted to make something with a fruit fruit note like this? Because uh, the citrus is what I was getting out of it. Is it? Uh, uh, it's amazing that the hops do the work. Is that that's just part of the. That's the chemistry involved in the brewing process, right? Basically, yeah. I mean, recipe development, um, it's equal parts art and cause and effect. Okay. I mean, think of it like cooking. You know, yeah. if you're trying something, you say, this needs a little more kick. Let me throw some cayenne in here. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, it's same thing as adding garlic to a pasta sauce, for example. Okay. The only downside when you're brewing is you don't get immediate feedback. You can't then just <laughs> taste it. You have right. to wait until it's done. Yeah. So that's part of where... Um, Trial and error and testing phase really comes into play. Sure. Um, that and then just experience and you know knowledge of your ingredients. Really. How, how do you keep up with the process? Do you are you handwritten notes and stuff, or do you keep up with computer wise? Like, I'd say like, we're equal parts yeah? uh, uh, paper and computer. Really, um, okay. a lot of the primary recipe development is done on a computer simply because software makes it a lot quicker and easier for you, especially right. with like inventory management and so forth. But I don't know. I'm an old school paper guy. Yeah. I've got notebooks on notebooks on yeah. notebooks. So. Guy and I tried a microbrewery in the studio one time, and uh, I used Post-it notes, but they all got unsticky and fell on the ground, so we didn't know what we were making. It, it, was, it, it did no, not go very it well. Was, it was that that one didn't stick. Already. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. Now, how do you tell or control how much alcohol is in the actual beer? I mean, I know you have a test for it, but at what point do you say, okay, that's probably enough, and you're done? What? How do you do that? Um, when you're talking about recipe development, um, that's a balance between, um, without going into way too much detail, um, so you have what's called a starting graph or original gravity, it's basically like a sugar density or a sugar content. Um, when you look at the difference between what it was originally and what it was post-fermentation, um, through that process, you can tell there's a calculation to tell what your alcohol content is. Um, as far as brewing the beer consistently every time, it's the same thing as you don't have to think about putting your pants on in the morning, you know, that same concept. Cool. I mean, okay. you run it a few times, you have a brew sheet and a log in front of you. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we check all those numbers in each process because as a commercial brewer, you need your product to be consistent every single time. Right. But again, going back to recipe development, it's a lot of cause and effect. Yeah. So for example, um, I can throw a recipe together and have a general idea ahead of time of what that starting gravity needs to be. Okay. And I know generally what alcohol content I'm looking for. So between that starting gravity and the ability for the yeast that we use to ferment those sugars into alcohol, just right off the bat, I can say, well, if I start around this gravity and I use this yeast, I'll end somewhere around this okay. alcohol content. That's good to know. And you're close from there, and you can do little tweaks as you need. All right. And, and as far as how do you get the uh, alcohol increase, the, the more of the malts that you use that create the starches and the sugars, the more the yeast is going to eat it and produce exactly. more alcohol. So okay. sometimes you have different strains of yeast that will survive in higher alcohol situations. So you have to take a look at those to put those in there with that as well. Exactly. But to can help increase that alcohol level, it's going to be more starches and more sugars, uh, which is, comes from the malts. So going in, you pretty much know, all right, I want this one to be higher alcohol or I want this one to be lower. Exactly. And there's okay. ways that you can play with that okay um you uh, a lot of i mentioned before i said um corn in reference to macro lagers um a lot of macro lagers uh producers in the u.s will use corn as a portion of their fermentables because that's a classic american lager recipe it's something that's abundant mm-hmm. here okay um corn is going to give you uh dextrose type sugars or dry sugars if you want to say it that way that will give you dry ethanol flavors okay. so they'll produce alcohol it's just not going to taste good yeah. i mean yeah. you could yeah. make a beer <laughs> quote unquote, entirely yeah. from corn. It's basically just prison hooch at that point. Sure. You know? yeah. um, so that's, again, going back to the recipe development, that's where a lot of like that cause and effect comes into play. So using our Stugel Flugel IPA, for example, um, we use a pretty generous percentage of a, a grain called honey malt. Uh, it's a specialty malt that contributes very little fermentable sugar. So you're not actually really getting any alcohol from that. Okay. What you are getting in turn are long chain sugars or proteins, if you want to call it that, that contribute okay. to body and head retention, which helps the beer hold that nice head, then also gives you a lot of residual sweetness. So your typical beer yeast, again, without going into much detail, can only convert short chain sugars that you get from things like base malt, for example. So that's gonna contribute all of your alcohol and little to no flavor. Specialty grains like caramel malts, roasted malts, honey malts, those types of things are gonna contribute uh, more of your flavor and color and body and have very little to do with your final alcohol content. Uh, Ian, by the way, getting an A plus in science from the Morning Hog. <laughs> to that, yeah, that's right. It's a little trophy. <laughs> that's why he's the man. Uh, over there. But it, that stuff fascinates me because it seems like such a, uh, like you said, you have a basic starting point in all these beers, and sure. then all of a sudden things go different directions. Uh, so, 
Guy, you mentioned alcohol content. Get ready. Okay. Because I see it written on this bottle. Uh Uh-oh. 7.3 for our third sample from Half Wall today. Well, then let me go ahead and make room for that Yeah, go ahead and make room for that. And and keep your dirty hands off the bottle. Uh, as uh, <laughs> this is my favorite, Vinny, tell us what's coming. Oh, look at that thing! Yeah, this is uh, the Jeffacus, and yes. I'm gonna let Ian go ahead and describe it in his words. All right, so before I describe the beer, let me let me take you back in the history of this beer. We have a minute, right? Yes, God, right. please. Cool. But well, there's no time frame in beer. All right, I love it. <laughs> yeah. So we're in the trailer, right? We're developing these recipes. And a friend of ours, Emery Bays, um, who is a co-owner of Auto Elixir Meadery in DeLand. Okay. Um, she contacts me and she says, hey, we've got this really cool event coming up in DeLand. And we're doing pairings with beer and bourbon and barbecue. And we'd love to have you guys out. And we actually have an open spot to pair with Maker's Mark right okay. now. Oh. I say, that's so cool. Sounds Ooh, good. And she done. says, you know, do you have maybe like a stout or something like that that you could treat that with? And I said, you know what? That's a huge coincidence. I actually have this killer oatmeal stout that we add bourbon, coffee, and vanilla to. Okay. And she says, oh, that's awesome. We got to have you guys there. Let's do it. Everything's great, right? So I get off the phone with her, and I look at uh, the guy I was working with at the time, and I say, crap. We got to figure out an oatmeal <laughs> stout and put some bourbon, coffee, and vanilla in Uh-oh. it. And we need that in like two weeks. So uh, we shifted gears, and yeah. we made uh, an early version of this beer. Um, it featured Maker's Mark at that time specifically because we were doing a pairing uh, with them for this event. Um, we since do not use Maker's Mark simply to be able to produce this beer in a larger quantity. Right. Um, but it does still feature bourbon. Uh, and we toned down the alcohol content a little bit. It was originally double-digit alcohol. Oh, and, wow. Um, we're going to re-release that version on a seasonal basis. But as far as nice. our regular offering yeah. of this beer, we wanted to make it something that was a touch more approachable. Um, so when you drink this, um, you get right up front a sweet note. Right? Oh, yeah. Some people taste like a cinnamon or a graham cracker type yeah, it's flavor. Yeah, va- va- it's sort of vanilla, but almost, uh, I was thinking s'mores yeah. is what I was getting so without the chocolate. There's no it's almost spice, chocolatey. No spice almost. of any sort in there. Mm, no. If, if you were to try the base beer um, without the addition, I'm sorry. Except vanilla. Yeah, except vanilla. vanilla. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> no, I mean, it's kind of but the But the base beer has, what? so nothing. So if There's you no try spices. the base beer, yeah. um, it gives you a really strong chocolate and coffee profile. Okay. And not a chocolate like a, a sweet like Hershey's type chocolate or something mm-hmm. like that. It's more of like a dry baker's cocoa, yeah. like okay. natural cocoa type flavor. Yeah. Um, we use a black malt in there as okay. opposed to a roasted barley. So it contributes more of a smooth cold brew coffee like flavor as opposed to a really bitter astringent coffee type flavor. Right. Um, so then what we do is uh, we use the bourbon to make you call it an ethanol extract. Um, essentially, you can extract flavors and so forth and condense them using ethanol as okay. opposed to like a boil or something like okay. that, water. Um, so we use the bourbon for that uh, to extract the vanilla and the coffee, and then that is added into the beer on the cold side. It's blended around, and then we actually carbonate and keg that from that point. So that's where you get that flavor from. So the, yeah. the vanilla comes through up front. You get the coffee on the finish to kind of help dry it out. Yeah. And then the, the almost bourbony, smoky characteristic coasts you between the sweet and the dry. That is... I would consider a like a dessert beer mm-hmm. per se. Like it'd be really great followed with a cigar. I mean that that is amazing. I love this damn beer. Yeah, and the one and the one thing I've yeah. I, oh, it's my ice cream, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Guinness yeah. was my do introduction it. to any sort of dark beer at all. Yeah, and that's so a dry always, Irish stout. Yeah, and I've always kind of gauged against against Guinness, but I don't like the I don't drink coffee. Okay. So the coffee flavor, but this does not the, it's not an overriding coffee flavor. Exactly. This I like this a lot yeah. better. Yeah, this you has know, a little more uh, sweetness than a Guinness would have. It. Yeah. Guinness is that dry Irish run through nitrous. Is that what it is? That what it is? Yeah, they run it through <laughs> nitrous. Yeah. It has more of a creamy head to it, and it yeah. gives it a little bit of a, a, not a sweet flavor. You get more of the coffee like yeah. you talk about on the back of it. I laugh because we had that uh, the Irish uh, Rita Gilligan from the uh, Hard Rock Hotel de the Beach who came over, and she was uh, she was really hyper and i said she's like nitro irish <laughs> i was gonna ask you why you were laughing at me uh, a second ago like, what the, what the I hell did i do my own i thought i did something that was our inside joke of the day all right, all right. i'm glad you explained it to everybody else now. yeah we, we, gotta, we should kind of share it now i gotta share uh but this is real this is very drinkable and i am not a dark beer guy this and it's 7.6 percent so it doesn't taste like 7.6 percent no. no the beers like that as well as you so mentioned earlier it's not prison hooch yeah <laughs> it's very deceptive yeah. um you'd be surprised uh typically a stout or, or a dark more robust beer like that if you're talking of someone who's 
maybe new to craft or just in general prefers lighter beers or IPAs, right. they're usually the people who are immediately are going to shy away. Those are the people who come to the bar and say, I don't want anything dark. I only want something hoppy or something light. Right. But again, you'd be amazed at how many people just love that beer. I mean, yeah. I think the thing I hear about that the most is I don't like stouts, but I love this. Right. What about pairings? I mean, we talked about pairings before. What in your mind when you're when you're putting these together? Is there ever a time where you're like, oh, you know what, this would go well with on our menu? Is there ever anything that crosses over like that that you specifically think that people should try? So this is going to sound like a cop out answer. Part of me. Um, <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> honestly, I think any of these beers will go great with any of the foods on the menu, simply because um, they have an array of salads and burgers and things like that. Um, if you want something a little more robust with a lighter meal, you can have the stout. If you okay. want something to play with the citrusy flavors or fresh notes that you get from something you're eating, you can drink the IPA. Okay. If you want something that just washes your lunch down yeah. and isn't going to get you drunk too fast, your right. boss doesn't know when you go back to your office, you drink the blonde. <laughs> you know, it's, okay. you get down with any of it. So again, it sounds like a cop out answer, no, but it's right. really not. I mean, all three of these beers. And the reason we rolled out these three were um, made to complement the restaurant menus mm -hmm. because the restaurants are a primary market, but still hold their own I as standalone you. beers so we can get taps outside of those okay. restaurants. Yeah, you, you, you can take a look at like your IPAs. They go well with spicy foods. People don't realize that. It pulls out that uh, spice, pulls out a lot of good flavor profiles out of that uh, with your IPAs. Yeah. Um, you know, the Jeff, because that's a great beer, believe it or not, with a good burger or a good barbecue or right. something with some sweetness to it to kind of complement and bring all that out. And the blue trailer, like you said, that's real good for just about anything you yeah, want to eat with it. I am so pleasantly nice. surprised by the style, too. I mean, it is, we're, it, we're now starting to play with treatments, thanks to Jordan here. That's yeah. something that he really specializes in a lot. There's a lot of great ideas for um, just you know adding really cool and and funky things to beer so for example uh, is that a nice way of saying jordan gets it weird is that what that's good though because i love that that express so we'll, go ahead what's yeah, uh um, what's cooking we, uh, so well, i just went to a beer fest a couple of weeks ago yeah and uh for the beer fest it's in gainesville gainesville is a huge craft beer community right um, i'm from gainesville i worked at swamp Ed for like okay years out there all right and um I know in Gainesville, people want the weird beers. Right? <laughs> Do they? <laughs> so so if, we're, if we're going to this thing, like I'm gonna bring our IPA, I'm gonna okay. bring our stout. Okay. But I gotta bring something weird. <laughs> so I threw a bunch of strawberries and habaneros into the IPA. Boom. And had this really spicy but like sessionable beer. I mean, I had people lining up. That sounds very appealing for this strawberry yeah. habanero IPA. You get the you get the heat on the front end. Yeah. And then it just kind of finishes out with the strawberry. Yeah. And that heat kind of rides with you for like 30, 40 minutes. Okay. When is that one remember our beer coming out? Yeah. So, is that, is that uh, going to sneak back into the mix? Yeah. Uh, today, we actually took a half batch. We do, what, four barrel batches? Yeah, we're doing four barrel batches. So we right took now. two barrels and uh, threw a bunch of habaneros into that. And then tomorrow, we're going to throw a bunch of strawberries into it. And. We should have at least a keg at all the restaurants. Yeah, there'll be at too. least one oh, keg at each okay. one of the half wall restaurants. That's going to come out on Monday, and then this guy's going to pick oh, that up and I am. sell oh. that. We're picking that up and selling it back to you, I guess. So okay. I, uh, guy, will you do me a favor and just put a big giant circle on the calendar over there for me to get the half wall on Monday? Uh, that sounds phenomenal, though, man. What and day? It's, it, uh, it's going to go in kegs on Monday. It'll be probably sometime a week or two after that, I would say. By the I'll, time it I'll goes fill to you in on the show plan. when you come in. I'll let you, you know when it's happening. around when Thank they you. want to tap in. Everything. It's I'll just circle all three days. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys. Just yeah. circle the whole thing. There's not a bad day to go to Half Wall. <laughs> <laughs> the, the half wall is never a, there's never a bad day to go there just we're uh, participating in may day right now so it's a whole month of you guys need to go to half wall yeah okay good well i'll count us in so, uh, is the end game by the way to get these beers that you guys are creating out uh, out of the restaurant and have them in other places yeah what they're what they're doing is they're expanding finally uh putting more tanks in once okay. the tanks go in uh, that'll enable us to buy more from them okay. and then our guys will be able to sell outside of just the half walls okay uh right. that should be hopefully within the next three months correct yeah if that um slightly derail i can't say that's our end game because that's insinuating <laughs> we're stopping there yes so I, yeah, I gave, yeah yeah that's true so with that Goal. being said um we just in our line of fermenters or tanks that we have right now we just got a fourth one online okay. so that's going to allow us to 
for the time being, at least have extra batches of these beers. Okay. Um, we have a seven barrel brew house, and then we have 15 barrel tanks will allow us to run double batches on that larger system. Wow. Uh, so once we do that here, those will be online in the next month or two. And then there's always a, a slight dial in phase with new equipment and so forth. So anyway, right. long story short, we should have a lot more of these three beers out by the end of the summer latest. Okay. And then freeing up the small tanks we have will allow us to implement uh, some other beers. So uh, the fourth beer we're going to put out is going to be a traditional Irish red. Okay. And the fifth beer we're going to put out uh, is the double IPA I was okay. speaking of. Wow. And and you always have to be forward looking, right? So obviously you're start thinking you got to start thinking fall and winter beers. I live my pretty, life forward. Looking. Right? <laughs> it's like it's it, there's no stopping the beer game. Is no what I like to say. I, I, I coined that phrase by the way. It's like a big train just keeps <laughs> rolling along. So I'm going to put you on the spot real quick. Please do. Name a beer after us. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm for it. Rig, did, Riggs and Guy? A, we did Riggs have an after show. No, Riggs and Guy. Riggs and Guy? Oh, the, yeah, the whole Riggs thing. And guy, Riggs and Guy. The morning hog beer. It's a, we, we feel like uh, between guys, sort of, he's got a, you know, he's got a tough, bold exterior, and I'm a, a huge pussy. So if you could combine <laughs> those two elements in a beer, we'll, uh, we'll I don't make, know. Uh, extra special bitter. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for putting a positive spin on that, Jordan. I appreciate it. I just uh, realized that you guys are whores. This is like the fourth guys you asked to make a beer after you. So. We all, yeah, I none of them agreed yet. He actually he actually said okay. The oh, other okay. one's like, yeah, we'll think about it. Ian's verbally committed on video, sort of. <laughs> you got to understand, you're, you're held to it now, Ian. So I'm going to trust you on that. Catch many fish. Yeah, absolutely. He's crossing his fingers under the table. Uh, but no, uh, the, uh, I, I, he is. <laughs> Uh, the half wall is the place, man, and it is, and it's been you know you give them all the locations and let everybody know where they should go wherever so they're watching and hearing we've this. We've got the half wall restaurant, which shares the building with the brewery that is on forty four in New Smyrna Beach, next to the Harley Davidson place and across from the Publix. There, uh, there is Stugall's Cafe, I believe it's called, or okay. Stugall's Bar and Restaurant, something to that effect. Um, which was the old half wall restaurant that was on Canal Street. Right. Um, that's still with us. It was just rebranded, changed the menu slightly. They're now offering pizzas and things like that. So in there. Uh, oh, we've got the half wall restaurant in Port Orange on Nova Road. Mm -hmm. There is the half wall restaurant in DeLand on, I believe, Indiana Avenue, if I remember correctly. Okay. And then there is Breakers on New Smyrna Beach, right on the ocean. So yes. that, that's uh, separate from the half wall restaurants entirely. That's more yeah. of uh, just a burger and beer beach hangout type spot. Right. Um, but we're affiliated with them as well. It's and great to have there, though. Yeah, at least one of our beers. Honestly, actually, at Breakers, they're selling more of our IPA right now. Really, than the, uh, the other restaurants. Yeah, I believe they have two on, if I oh. remember correctly. Um, and then little by little, we're looking at other restaurants to expand them out to. Yeah. Uh, once we get caught up with them right. and get them taken care of, so even before the new systems go in, we're starting to we're starting to catch up a little bit. So um, we'll have some other restaurants yeah. nearby that cool. they'll be in as and well. There's some awesome bars that um, we're really loyal to that we would love to get into. Like like McKay's, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. Hey, McK and Deland, hey, McKay's. Wink, wink. Yeah. <laughs> right. And if you guys can't drive around and find them right now, you can check them out at thehalfwall.com. And right. when you do come and visit us, you're not going to be able to drive around or find anything afterwards. No, that's right. Just stay put. Get an Uber. It's all good. I'm coming over. I mean, I've, I've, I've patronized your uh, new Smyrna locations a lot, so I can't wait to get back over there now and Try some more of this stuff. Just want to throw out there, too, that uh, the DeLand Craft Beer uh, Committee met yesterday. Yes. And February 9th, we've picked a date. So if you're out there, put your name on for the February 9th, and you'll be able to see these guys. And probably we're going to try to reach 100 breweries this year. So make sure you get down there uh, and come and see everybody awesome. that's going to be here talking yeah. uh, throughout all these uh, yeah. shows that we're doing. Yeah, Volusia Beer Week in general, but especially the Deland Craft Beer Fest. I mean, that's that's it. That that's Volusia Beer scene right there. Yeah. I mean, that, that's the best of the best. It's uh it's a really cool thing if you're a craft enthusiast. It's awesome to come right. out and hang out, but it's also really cool for us on the production side because sure. that's one of the few chances that all of us have to just get together and say, "What's up? I yeah. haven't seen you since last February." Sure. What, what are you making? Cool yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. You want to know the coolest part? I'm one of the founders. So it's an awesome Vinny. event. So we get a bad, bad boy. Vinny. Shameless plug. So yeah. We have a oh. we have a we have a whole committee now, Anne Marie, like you talked about earlier. But we have a whole committee yeah. that we work with. But uh, myself and Todd Carpenter started it uh, ten years ago this year. Yeah. So. Yep, well, absolutely. we can't. We can't wait. That'll be a week before my birthday. Just saying. Ooh, I don't know, you know, all right. Well, maybe I can get you in for get, free. I'll then. get the gift registry up. It's absolutely. good. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, uh, thank you guys for coming in. This has been awesome. Thank you for having. Me. And, cheers uh, and yeah. cheers. Yeah. Cheers. No cheers.